Milady, please calm yourself. We still don't know who the culprit is. And Beatrice-sama is an important and honored guest of the Masters. Goda. <laughs> what if I get to bring her dinner later? So what? If we grab her by the collar, she'll definitely confess. If I can just look her in the eye, I'll know. I'll see through her. A witch? Beatrice? Yeah, right. I'll expose her. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so true, what up, Evie? Go to God shaming you as if he has any idea. He has no idea. <laughs> Jessica never stopped moving. Goda and Kanan chased after her, doing their best to convince her to stop, but Jessica never lent them an ear. Eventually, the witch's VIP room came into view. This VIP room was always sealed and never used. No matter what kind of guest came, Kinzo wouldn't let them in there. And yet, the servants were always made to clean this room so that it could be used at any time. So the servants had started calling this room the witch's VIP room after their second shapeless master. Jessica knew about this too, and she couldn't forgive the arrogance of the one who called herself a witch by staying in that room. The Golden Witch was just a fairy tale. Come on, a witch? To Jessica, she was nothing more or less than the murderer who had brutally killed her parents. Question her, hear her pitiful excuses, make her sputter in pain, gasp in anguish. No matter how hard she pretends to be a witch, I'll teach her that she's just a stinking, sweaty human. As Jessica yelled with all her strength, she hit the door to the VIP room. It definitely wasn't a knock. That sound was the beating of her anger's hammer, as if she was determined to break the door down if it wasn't opened. Open up, Beatrice. Come out. You hear me, right? Open up. There was no answer. Jessica grabbed the doorknob without any reservation, but she felt the resistance of the lock. He turned around to see the two servants and spoke. The master key will unlock this, right? Use it. M milady that would be horribly rude. Although Goda was flustered, he tried to somehow calm Jessica's anger. After hanging his head silently for a while, Kanon pulled a master key from his jacket pocket. kanon son, are you sure? Yes, I'm fully aware it would be rude if she happens to be in there. At any rate, if Beatrice had nothing to do with that incident, all she has to do is give us a satisfying explanation. That's right, exactly. Let me borrow that. Jessica snatched the master key from Cannon's hand and violently shoved it into the keyhole. Immediately there was a small sound and she felt the lock click. Then, without asking permission, she flung the door open. Beatrice! Where are you? Come out! Jessica rudely stepped into the room. The witch wasn't anywhere to be seen. That bitch! She's not here! Where the hell'd she go? Uh, yes, she doesn't seem to be here. Jessica, thinking she might be hiding somewhere inside the room, peeked behind the curtains and under the bed, but she couldn't find anyone. However, there definitely were signs that the bed had been used, and though it was only a vague sense, the atmosphere in the room felt a little soft. It wasn't the hard atmosphere of a place normally devoid of people, like the chapel. You could definitely tell that someone had spent the night in this room. But she could not be seen. In reality, neither Jessica nor Goda had met Beatrice. They had only been told by those who had met her that she looked like a double of the character in that portrait. So they were doubtful about what her face really looked like. However, Kanan alone had met her. He understood what kind of being that witch was, what kind of personality she had. So he knew that forcing their way in here in search for her definitely wouldn't work out. She must be watching us bitterly flail about in vain from somewhere, sneering at us. She's that kind of person. 
because he was looking at things that way, Kalman was the first to find it. The other two were concentrating on finding the shadow of a person, so they didn't notice. Near a water jug on the side table, there was a single sheet of letter paper. On it was a short message, and nearby was a fountain pen, which had probably been used to write it. Conan had already come to understand the witch. After finding the corpses, they'd been overcome by rage and barged in here, only to find no one. So of course the witch would mock them. You can't mock someone unless they know they're being mocked. So, in other words, that's what this must be. Milady, there's something written here. Something written? What? Jessica dashed over and violently snatched the piece of paper away. She probably wasn't trying to be violent. She just couldn't control her strength right now. What the- Don't fuck with me! As soon as she read the message, Jessica went into a wild rage, crumpled the paper up and threw it. Then, she grabbed a light stand by the bedside and violently swung it around, mercilessly hitting the walls and furniture with it. Oh no, the furniture! The light bulbs all shattered at once, and the fragments were scattered across the room. Milady, please calm down. You'll hurt yourself. Let go! Damn it! Damn it! Come out, Beatrice! How could you do that to mom and dad? You think you scare me? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll beat you to death, so show yourself. I told you to let go of me, damn it! This was written on the paper. Did you think I'd be that senile to just sit around here waiting for you to come barging in? You're way too inelegant for this intellectual night. I can only imagine what the parents who raised you to be such a moron must have looked like. Oh, right. I saw them, and they look just as moronic as you. Now their bellies are full in the land of sweets. It was the sort of thing that that witch would write. It meant she'd predicted that one of the children who'd lost their parents would come running in here. If she's hiding somewhere in this room, she must be rolling around laughing now. The witch was that kind of person. She sneered at people's misfortune, using it to stave off the boredom of a thousand years. I don't know, I feel like if I was Canon, I would have hid that note. <laughs> Hand it over. I'm telling you, you'll hurt yourself. Ooh. Ooh. I told you to let go. Damn it. Damn it! <sighs> go to snatch the light stand Jessica had been holding. After all, if she kept swinging it around, she might end up smashing it against something, which could cause serious injury. To Goda's eyes, Jessica probably looked mad with rage, burning herself up with the flames of anger. But Kanan's eyes saw it differently. Those were probably tears of sadness hidden by rage. So. When the light stand was taken from Jessica, when she started crying on the floor, scratching at the carpet, almost as though she was groveling, Goda was surprised, but Kanan was not. Of course, she had lost her means of crying by lashing out in rage. Uh, Dad, Mom. Considering that she was a daughter of the Ushiramiya head family, she was in a very shabby state. She scratched at the carpet with her fingernails, and even her feet were scratching. Jessica cried very, very hard, because if she didn't, her rage would start building up again and swallow her up. But over and over again, she remembered that humiliating message. I can only imagine what the parents who raised you to be such a moron must have looked like. Don't you call them morons. Both Dad and Mom were smart. Unlike me, they were really smart. Don't you call them morons. Take it back. Take it back. Oh, right. I saw them, and they look just as moronic as you. Now their bellies are full in the land of sweets. 
Uh, damn it! I'll kill her. I'll kill her. I'll slice open her stomach and see how she likes it. Uh. <coughs> As Jessica cried and screamed, she triggered an asthma attack. The servants watching over her hurriedly ran up to her and rubbed her back, but that only provoked Jessica's wrath. <laughs> the hell? If you've got the time to do that, search for that bastard. Find him and bring him here. If you won't go, I will. And I'll kill him with my own hands. I'll slice open her stomach. <laughs> Don't touch me. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Jessica got up unsteadily, and as her asthma continued, she went out into the hallway. Milady, your medicine, quickly. I will call Dr. Nanjo. Godasan, would you leave this to me? Kanan had noticed. Goda, who was vastly separated from her in age, probably couldn't sense the tears in Jessica's heart. Kanan, who had noticed, had to be the one to support her. Kanan san, are you sure? I believe Milady needs some time to cry right now, considering that she saw her parents killed like that. Yeah, Kanan, that's a good observation. You're right. Yoda also understood, and he knew that Jessica and Kanan had shared a vague relationship with each other. So he understood everything and left it to Kanan. Very well. I will go back to Rosa-sama. Please take care of Milady. When Goda's being, like, kind of reasonable, I don't know what voice to give him. It's hard. Yes, leave it to me. Hanan's voice was frail, but he nodded firmly. After looking at his eyes, Goda nodded firmly as well. Goda was a veteran with many years behind him. He'd seen a great number of people in his life. Wh whatever, Goda, me too. I've seen a lot of people. What does that mean? So he knew the vigorous sparkle that could be found in the eyes of those who possessed self-control. He had surely seen that in Kanan's eyes. So he would leave this to Kanan. When you think about it, maybe this was the first time Goda had ever trusted Kanan and relied on him for a job. Jessica, still suffering from her asthma, seemed to be heading towards her room, though she kept leaning against the wall. Kanan followed her wordlessly. If she had asked for a hand, he would have leapt forward and supported her. But until Jessica did ask for that, he chose to hide himself, watching over her from a distance where he could come to her rescue at any time. <clears throat> when people feel their hearts are about to explode from sadness and want to have someone by their sides, you can bet 10 billion of them would want to turn around and find, find someone in the place Kanan now stood, as he watched over Jessica from behind. Then, finally, she doubled over in front of the door to her room. The asthma attack had stolen all of her strength, and her thoughts had gotten hazy from the lack of oxygen, making it impossible even to stand up again. But right then, Jessica didn't think she wanted someone to lend a hand. She still hadn't been able to overcome the flames of anger. Even if someone had offered her a hand with good intentions, Jessica would have wanted to tear it off right then. She knew how unfair that would be, so she definitely wouldn't ask for help until she overcame the fiery anger burning inside. Jessica had probably lost the willpower even to call for help, but Kanan heard it. He definitely heard it. Kanan definitely heard that voiceless call for help, one shared by miserable grievers the world around, an endless scream that no one ever seems to hear. Damn, that's a very poignant line, but also any grievers in chat? Conan quietly knelt by Jessica's side and wordlessly offered her a shoulder. Though Jessica kept coughing painfully, she accepted it, unlocked the door to her room, and entered. This way. I'll prepare your medicine right away.
Jessica often said that when her asthma got serious enough, it hurt so bad that it felt like she'd vomit up her whole stomach. Her, va her face was pale and her gaze wavered, and yet the coughing continued. Even so, her sadness was probably even stronger. After having her sit on the bed, Cannon took a bronchodilator from a cute little basket on a nearby side table and handed it to her. Jessica sometimes forgot to take her medicine with her. Whenever this seemed to have happened, Cannon would take notice and secretly carry around the inhaler from the first aid kit in the servant room, but he hadn't done so today. He scolded himself, as though wondering how he could call himself furniture after failing to bring it with him on a day like this. Then, he remembered the day when he'd used that word and somehow betrayed Jessica's feelings. It jarred Conan's heart, but he felt it would be indiscreet to think about something like that considering how Jessica felt now, and he locked it up inside the depths of his heart. <sighs> when she inhaled her medicine, Jessica's wild breathing calmed down bit by bit and she was finally able to regain her composure. But she'd lost too much strength and willpower to get up from the bed. Are you alright, milady? I'm... alright. I'm all messed up over mom and dad. But... after I cry a bit more, I'll be alright. Conan regretted his poor choice of words. Did he really say, are you alright to her? Was he really that clueless of the pain in her heart? This was what made him furniture. This was why he couldn't become human. I will be in the corridor. If you need anything, please call me immediately. I'm sure we've all said, are you alright, to someone who's grieving that's like totally not alright. I don't think that makes you furniture, buddy. Conan understood that she still needed some time to cry alone. He told her to call him at any time, bowed, and tried to leave the room. Uh. Do you need something? Jessica had spoken up as though she wanted him to stop, so Conan had stopped. If she asks it, I'll do anything I can to help her. Right now, I'll e I'd even become a cane or a chair if it would help ease the pain in her heart. If by doing that, I could make up for the pain I dealt to her heart on that day. For a while, Jessica stared into Cannon's eyes. It was as though her reason for stopping him was something she couldn't put into words. For a while, neither spoke. Jessica broke that silence, with a small voice. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's nothing. Could you tell Aunt Rosa that I want to be alone for a while? I won't let you be alone. Huh? I won't let you be alone. So, I will be in the corridor. Please call for me. At any time. Ah, oh, you were so close, buddy! Just for an instant, it looked like some kind of hope had flitted into Jessica's eyes. But it was very faint, and disappeared like the first snow on the surface of a river. Thanks. Let me cry alone. For just a bit. Oh, well, this is a new song. This is Moon. This is a good track. Yes. Excuse me. Conan bowed once again and closed the door. He thought those words of his would give her some courage, but now it felt as though they'd actually hurt her for some reason. Why? He didn't know. Surely that was because... He was furniture. That was why he couldn't grasp human sadness even now. So there's something interesting happening here. 
where it's like... Conan blames the fact that he's furniture for not being able to understand this interaction. But the thing at the heart of this interaction is that he can't fathom the fact that she would want him to be with her, to comfort her, because he considers himself furniture. So it's not really that it's because he's furniture, it's that it's because he thinks of himself as furniture that he can't process this interaction. Poor guy. As Kanon repeatedly questioned himself, he walked down the corridor. He felt like the window at the corridor's end was coolly calling to him. In the end, am I nothing more than furniture after all? It was still pouring outside, a dark gray world. Even on days like this, Shannon would surely see the ocean and know that it was blue. But to my eyes, even if it cleared up, I would only see gray. Until I can understand the blue of the ocean, I'll be nothing but furniture imitating a person. You really don't understand a woman's heart, do you? At times like that, you ought to silently remain by her side. <laughs> That's why you're furniture. You. There shouldn't have been any trace of human life in this corridor. It had been an empty corridor filled with frigid air, but those scoffing words approached Kamen from behind. When he turned around, he saw that witch. That witch who hadn't shown herself when Jessica had searched for her with a rage bordering on madness, who had left that sneering letter to toy with Jessica. There are three ways to hurt a woman. Let me teach you them. One is to hurt them with a blade. Another is to hurt them in their heart. The last way is the most difficult and most effective method of hurting them. And yet, it can hurt them without you even realizing it. Do you know what I mean? How could I know? I don't even want to know. It's to betray their expectations. No living being is more of a dreamer than a woman. They make up dreams all on their own and end up hurting their own selves. A distant man like you hurts women the most. You couldn't understand. You have no idea how deeply you've wounded Jessica. This is organ short six million in C minor. After all, you're furniture. <laughs> I have no intention of playing along with your nonsense. Did you appear only to sneer at me? Uh, that's kind of that's kind of her thing. Don't be so full of yourself, furniture. You aren't worth sneering at. <laughs> Still, though you may not be worth my time on your own, if two of you are gathered, that's all I need. The pleasure that comes from laughing at the fates of young couples never tires me. What did you say? You don't mean... The lady is going to be... I need two who are close for the sacrifices of the second twilight. The two of you truly are convenient. Wait! Don't misunderstand. Milady and I don't have that kind of relationship. We can't become the sacrifices for the second twilight. <laughs> That's why you hurt Jessica. That's why you cannot become human. Then there should be no problem. If you won't admit you have feelings for Jessica, I can accept that. But I will kill her. Why? You idiot! Isn't it obvious? It'll be fun to kill her and see your face twist in pain. Why else? Following the rules of the ceremony, 13 people will be sacrificed on my whims. However, there's no rule that says I can't kill more. 
If it amuses me, I can kill any number of people. So I will. Make me laugh as hard as I can. Cat on the furniture! At that time, Canon definitely heard Jessica scream. Like, I love this aspect of Umineka so much. Imagine if just... Imagine if Culprit from Higurashi was just present, like, the whole time. Talking about all the murder they were gonna do. It'd be incredible. When he blinked and looked down the corridor, the witch who'd supposedly been there so nonchalantly just a second ago was gone. At that moment, he was just standing there all alone in the corridor, doing nothing. And the person he wanted to protect was asking for help from far away in that direction. It was obvious what he should do. It wasn't logical. It was an electric le reflex. Without a trace of hesitation or distraction, there was a person he wanted to protect, and she was asking for help. And at that moment, he genuinely wanted the person by her side to be him. This, this track is life's end? Okay. When he flew into Jessica's room, the scene that greeted his eyes was a bizarre one. The room had become a fantastical world where a blizzard of gold leaf colored specks danced, almost as though gold leaf had been scattered inside a snow globe. No, that's not it. I've seen this spectacle before. This isn't gold leaf. It's countless golden butterflies. Beatrice's minions. Jessica was surrounded by countless butterflies, waving her hands around, trying frantically to drive them away. Milady! Can and Kun! Help! Kanan rushed towards Jessica and violently brushed the cloud of butterflies away. The butterflies, which were sickening despite their beauty, surrounded Jessica's face, trying to crawl in through her mouth and nose. Jessica choked violently, almost as though the butterflies were triggering an asthma attack, mocking her. But when Kanan ran towards her, the butterflies stopped attacking and began to dance an elegant rondo around the pair. Cannon Kun! Cannon Kun! It's okay. While there's still life in me, I won't let anyone lay a finger on you. Come out, Beatrice! Are you happy now? As he stood guard in front of Jessica, who was using her inhaler and seemed to be in pain, Conan yelled into the empty air. And when he did, the empty air did indeed laugh back, satisfied. Then, she showed herself. It wasn't in response to Kanan's demand. It was obviously because appearing and sneering would bring them even more humiliation. And plus, it was more fun! <laughs> <laughs> now everything fits to the plot. Now you're carp on the chopping board. No, since we've got a pair of you, should I call it duck with green onions? <laughs> you... Beatrice? Please, stand back. I'll protect you, milady. When the princess and knight come together, it's inevitable that the witch will appear. Yes. Why don't you show me how much power Kinzo's furniture can muster? She snapped her fingers with a piercing sound. When she did, a blizzard of gold butterflies was stirred up, and they began to form a small mountain as they whirled around in a circle. It was just like the swirling of a cold, wintry wind that builds up a mountain of leaves.
From that mound of gold, a hand sprouted, and it appeared, as though a resident of the world below was crawling up from beneath the ground. What is this? What the hell is this? Jessica couldn't pre comprehend what she was seeing right now, and her mouth kept flapping open and closed. It was the bite of wisdom, seen in those trying to understand something incomprehensible. Hello there. <laughs> that thing crawling up was probably an attendant who served the witch. It appeared to be wearing a uniform suitable for one who served. What, 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 what's wrong? Does this seem... But its face was wrong. It looked strange. It was covered with pitch black hair, breathed rotten breath, and its eyes were filled with the same strange subterranean glow as lava. And to symbolize its non-human status, it had two horns. It was the figure of a goat-faced attendant who served the witch. By now, Jessica had no idea what she should say. All this happening in front of her couldn't be explained with common sense, and she couldn't do anything but open and close her mouth. Anti-magic anti -magic, uh, believers in shambles. <laughs> Jessica hadn't realized. He hadn't realized that this island had already been cut off from the rules of our world. But there were some things even she could understand. This goat attendant served the witch and was after her life. And apparently the witch had already given it the order. She was looking at Kanon with an expectant gaze. She looked at him with an expectant and therefore challenging gaze, as though asking him how he intended to protect this maiden. Though the attendant had looked especially bestial while crawling to its feet, you could see in the way that it carried itself that it possessed more than enough grace to be worthy of serving the Golden Witch. And you could tell that it was overflowing with the joy of furniture wanting to meet its master's expectations. Well then, why don't you show me? Let's see the power of Kinzo's furniture. This time, don't get the wrong idea, okay? Don't forget that your furniture got it. If you try to continue playing the human even now, this won't be settled by your death alone. <laughs> the goat attendant made what seemed to be a silent, respectful bow. Was it directed at its master, or was it offered to Kanan, its opponent? Then, on the attendant's hand, a blade of wicked malice appeared. There we go. Been waiting to hear that noise. What? What the hell is that? Jessica had been unable to understand what was happening before her eyes for a while now. All she understood was that this glow in front of her existed for the purpose of ending her life. And right now, that was enough. Conan spoke quietly to Jessica, who was hiding behind his back. Milady, please stay back against the wall. Never let your back leave the wall. What? <laughs> it's only right for the maiden to obediently hide behind the great knight's back. I do hope you enjoy the pleasure of having your life protected by a man. Now, Kanan, let's have a look at your blade. You just fucking did it! You just did it! Beautiful. At least when it comes to giving birth to furniture, Kinzo might even reach up as far as my feet. A thing like this can't even be used to trim the roses. Kanan, that goes so hard. 
If I was reading this for the first time, my cannon stocks would like fucking quadruple right now. Cannon Kung, what's? I didn't want to show you. So you've taken it out. How does it feel to expose your subhumanity in front of the girl you care for? Be silent. <laughs> so, you'll act composed even though you're really burning with wrath? Yes, they do say that truly hot flames burn a cool blue. Is that how you are now? There's no way I can kill you with my power. You are the moon. I could never smash the moon by throwing a rock. However, in order to manifest yourself, you've had to reflect your image on the surface of the water. If you throw a rock at the surface of the water, you might be able to disturb the moon's image for some time. But that doesn't mean the moon has been smashed. So. Until this life of mine is over. I'll keep on striking your reflection. God, Kevin gets some good lines. She truly did say so, Kanan Kun. I see you've whipped it out. I like it, Kanan. Begin, furniture. Even Beatrice is like, alright, that's pretty hard. Let's fucking go! Oh, what a beautiful curve. The witch's words of admiration broke the silence, and for just an instant they broke Jessica's paralysis. Dreaming? Come, furniture of the witch. I'll beat you down to the hell you came from. I don't know, Beatrice referred to Kanan as Kinzo's furniture. Yeah, this is a good track. This is called Where. W-H-E-R-E. -E. A strand of red had been left on Kanan's cheek. The witch saw this and grinned broadly. <laughs> Feel free to mutter excuses about how your instincts still haven't returned quite yet. Come on, come stay strong. It's okay. I won't die just yet. Oh shit! The mode seven. Oh, there it is. The noise. Oh shit. The curve drawn by the goat attendant's blade drew a large arc in empty space. Kanan wasn't there. He was behind it. After image technique, bitch! <laughs> Go back and await your master's return. Die. <laughs> Nothing personnel, furniture. If this battle of drawing sparkling curves was chess, then count on coming from behind was check. And press, and press, and press, and press. Use seven moves and make it mate. Perhaps the goat attendant hadn't even been granted the ability to go into death throes. As its knees buckled and fell over, it broke into a bunch of gold butterflies with a pop. So there was no sound of it hitting the ground. Even those unable to understand this battle would surely realize that Kanan had been magnificent. 
Hmm. <laughs> so, it couldn't win against a handmade piece. It seems you aren't quite that pathetic. You're next, Beatrice. The instant Kanan's blade sliced diagonally through the witch's form like a knife through butter, she turned gold and burst. Oh shit, she used burst. She scattered into several thousand gold butterflies, and for just an instant, the room was filled with the color of twilight. It was just as Kanan himself had said. Slicing Beatrice was just the same as slicing the surface of the water where the moon was reflected. The witch's form, with an ordinary expression on its face, as though she'd been there the whole time, was right behind Canon. <laughs> You've proven quite an entertaining show. Out of respect for that, I thought about letting you off the hook, but your rudeness now has made me change my mind. Don't lie. I won't let you kill Milady. Even if that's impossible, I won't let you kill her while I still live. You can't even do that much. Do not speak, furniture. Be silent, furniture. Know your place, furniture. Kanan Kun isn't furniture. Hmm. Huh? And what makes you think that? I don't need a reason. Kanan Kun is Kanan Kun. No, his real name's different, but a name doesn't make him furniture. Kanan Kun has his own way of living. That's a noble thing, and it's something he gets to decide for himself. You say he can't have an opinion because he's furniture, and that he can't live his own life because he's furniture? That's wrong. Milady, you mustn't provoke her. No, I've got to make this clear. Kanan Kun isn't furniture. He's human. Why? Kanan Kun rushed to save me of his own free will, and he stood in the path of a fearsome witch like you. He had so many chances to just let me go, but he didn't. Self sacrifice is part of the noble spirit that only humans have. That, mean Kanan, that means Kanan Kun's human. So take it back. Don't you call Canon Kun furniture again! M lady. <laughs> Be silent, human. Let's end this quickly, since this is still just the second twilight after all. Now. I shall sacrifice the two who are close, who have n acknowledged each other's dignity. Well then, arise, forgive the sin, one of the seven stakes of purgatory, lust. The witch summoned her furniture with a mixture of laughter and anger on her face. Asmodeus of lust, right here. <laughs> Hi, Esmodeus. I've had enough of this farce. Quickly, execute the second twilight. Don't keep me waiting, got it? As you command. Uh, and other weirdos shown up. <sighs> it took Canon less than an instant to understand. That goat face from a second ago had been nothing more than a pawn to the witch. However, this newly summoned furniture was a game piece with a vastly different value. Wow, I must be lucky to be given such wonderful prey. <laughs> you scared? How cute. <laughs> Come, furniture of the witch. I won't be killed by you. <laughs> You're acting pretty smart for a dunce who can't even follow me with his eyes. Here I go, okay? Hey, hey, where do you want it? Where do you want me to pierce you? Answer me, cutie. I'll pierce you good wherever you want. 
<laughs> Come on, answer me, cutie. Don't call me cute. <laughs> Here I go, you dunce. Come on, try to follow me, you blind idiot. <laughs> Oh, they just played, like, all the good Umi Neko sounds in a row. M lady. <laughs> I couldn't follow it with my eyes. But my guess was spot on. Serves you right. Cannon's back had been the target. But Jessica had predicted it. She'd predicted that the witch's target would be the complete opposite of fair and honest, his back. But she had no way to block it. She hadn't planned on it being some act of self-sacrifice. She just couldn't think of any other way to protect Canon's back. So she could do nothing but block it with her own back. The furniture of the witch, which had changed its form into a demon's stake, was buried deep into Jessica's back. It was an obviously fatal wound that reached as far as her lungs. When she saw this, the witch let out a loud, evil laugh. Because it had hit where the witch had predicted. Everything, everything, was as the witch had predicted. What's wrong, Cannon? Milady Jessica just got killed while you still live, didn't she? <laughs> Yes, yes, that's it. That's it, that face. That look on your face is what I wanted to see. <laughs> How truly enjoyable. That's enough. Die, die, make me laugh. Come, arise, forgive the sin. One of the seven stakes of purgatory. Wrath. Satan of Wrath, right here. This prey is yours. Eat him up right now and close the curtain on his stage. If you were a human, I'd say it's time for you to step down. But since you're furniture, maybe I should say it's time for the stage manager to carry you behind the stage. I am not furniture anymore. I won't doubt that again. <laughs> oh, what's this? You want to be killed by me again? Your chest. It's so warm, and it feels so good to pierce it. Come on, let me have another taste, okay? Won't you make me feel really good with that hot, fresh blood in that warm chest of yours? <laughs> there was no way to block it. The sound of a woodpecker filled the entire room. And before he could blink, it was already right in the center of his chest. When you take a piece in chess, it's, the rules say it's impossible for your opponent's piece to defend itself. So this was the obvious result in accordance with the rules. Conan landed on his knees, and he apologized. Not to the witch, and not to Milady. He apologized... ...to Jessica. Okay, that one got me. It's... <laughs> it's small details like this that I forget. That's the shit that really gets me. You know. Because I remember the big stuff. Ugh. I'm sorry. I couldn't protect you. Don't worry about it. You were really cool. 
Haman finally fell over. He landed next to Jessica, and the two lay there like the constellation Gemini. You know, John and Kun, you aren't furniture anymore. Yes, I was too late in realizing that. I wanted to ask you what your real name was. My real name is... In his last moments, Conan wanted to tell her his real name, but Jessica had already fallen into a sleep from which she would never wake. So Conan's real name, which he had protected until today, in the end, he couldn't tell it to Jessica. I became cute. Those were the last words Kaladin left behind. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, furniture. Even after a hundred years, furniture will still be furniture. Have you ever heard of anyone stupid enough to dig a grave for their furniture when they throw it away? You smash furniture to pieces and make firewood, so all that's left is ashes. <laughs> that's how it is. Furniture gets no tombstone. It seems you believe death means an end to your humiliation, but that's naive. I'll show you what it really means to disgrace the dead. <laughs> After taking a puff from her pipe, the witch breathed the smoke at Cannon's corpse. When she did, Cannon's corpse softly floated up into the air and disappeared as though it had been eaten by a mouth in empty space. The witch played dirty until the very end. We have... Hold on a second here. Okay, no updates yet. The corpses of the pair who had managed to understand each other in the end were not even permitted to be close. If someone had been watching, they would probably say mournfully, so this is what you meant by disgracing the dead. However, Beatrice was far crueler than that. The reason for that would soon become apparent. 